oh God, with your brightness, oh, even now, oh, God, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Touch these books of clay, yes, and may they only say what you would have them to say, amen. even now, in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. In wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. And to devise curious works to work in gold and in silver and in brass. And in the cutting of stones to set them. And in the carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. And he had put in his heart that he may teach both he and Ahaliah, the son of Ahasimach, of the tribe of Dan. Them have he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work, of the engraver, of the other cunning workmen, and of the embroiderer, in blue, and in purple, and in scarlet, and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word. Um, I want to talk to you, amen, this morning, amen, about the artisans called by God. Amen. If I had to put a B to the title, I would say, you were made for this. Amen. You were made for this. Somebody turn your name and say, you were made for this. You were made for this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In this text, glory to God, hallelujah, 
Praise God. I'm going to talk to you again about a person named Bezalel. Amen? Uh, Bezalel. Amen? And there were two people, amen, that God chose to aid in the construction of the tabernacle, amen, that was in the forefront. And those two people's name were Bezalel and Oholiab. Amen? God chose them. Amen. And he called Bezalel and he called the other one by name. I mean, you know, it's not an accident. Amen. The things that God has placed in your heart, amen, to serve him. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. The, 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 the burden sometimes we feel, amen, glory to God, uh, to do, amen, the things, amen, glory to God, amen, that we want to do when it's called kingdom work. I know mean, God put that inside you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That burden is not, I mean, a bad burden. It's a holy burden. Amen. Yeah, on, because on, anything you do for God is a blessing. It shouldn't be a burden. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But that burning thing, amen, that fire that God put in you, amen, glory to God, amen, touch you with his kingdom, mind the kingdom work, God put that inside you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. No one can do it like you. Right. Yes. They can try to copy you and mimic you and, and all these different things, but I guarantee you that the anointing that's for your life, come on, is going to come off differently yes. when you do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank God. And how you know it's not a, it's not necessarily a bad thing when people copy you. Amen. Right. How many know they say flattery? Amen. Imitation. Is, is, the imitation, I'm sorry, is the greatest form of flattery. Yes. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So we shouldn't get mad when we see other people doing what we're doing. Amen. Matter of fact, especially when it comes to God and Jesus is uncreated, we want people to do what we're doing. Yes. If we have the right heart and the right spirit, we should be like, well, praise God. Yeah. Amen. Yes, yeah, she didn't get the credit. And I say that every Sunday, and she taking my, my slogan, or she taking my thing. Yeah. Glory to God, he ain't doing, he ain't giving me credit, whatever. But praise the Lord anyway. Yes, Lord. Because guess what? Somebody else is being blessed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I mean, you know, we hear stuff too. Yeah. And we forget we heard it and we think it's us and we, yeah. we got it from somebody else. Amen. amen. There's nothing new under the sun, the Bible says. Yeah, amen. amen. But we praise God, amen, because what we see is that during the Israelites' journey from Egypt, from the promise, from Egypt to the promised land, God called Moses to Mount Sinai in the Old Testament. Amen? And give you the clip notes in this message, amen? In Exodus chapter 19 to Exodus 24, amen? We understand that Moses was the lawgiver to his people. Amen. Moses was, amen? And the Bible says, the Bible says Moses is, uh, to Moses came the law, through Jesus came grace. Amen. amen? And so in the course of this conversation with Moses, God instructed Moses to gather the people and build the tabernacle. All right? Um, over in Israel right now, you see the remains of one of the temples, amen, glory to God, amen, praise God, that was built, amen, glory to God, amen, for God, amen, for God, amen. But that temple was destroyed, the last temple, the second temple was destroyed in AD 70 under Titus, amen, the Roman Emperor, amen, glory to God, amen. But before the first temple that was built by King Solomon, the son of David, glory to God, how do you know they didn't have a temple? They had what we call a tabernacle. Yes, amen. Lord. The tabernacle, amen, was a tent. Basically, it was a huge, big, glorious tent, amen, that you wouldn't have to read on your own everything that was supposed to be contained in this tabernacle. The tabernacle, I'm sure, is, is more beautiful than any, any churches that we see around here, amen, but it still was a tent, but we got, it was not construction, but we got, that was built to last, amen, over and then over hundreds of years. So you're going to get this morning. Thank you, Lord. And so God gave Moses the instruction to build that tabernacle. You know how people have tent meetings today? I know mean, that's how the church started out. Yes. It was one big tent meeting. And God would show up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then in the desert, amen, or wherever, amen, they had that tabernacle. Amen. We got, and God gave Moses specific instructions of how to, to build the church. I know mean, God is into the details. Amen. I know mean, God is into the aesthetics. Yes. Amen. That, that, that goes around church. Yes. I'm saying what we call church today. Right. He's into it. Don't let nobody fool you and yes. say, hey, you know, I don't care. We can have church in the park. Like, it's true. But God does care. Yes, he does. He does care, and then about the atmosphere, the aura. And then he does care. But we got. And then we got. We don't have to go as far. And then we got. And then and maybe the Catholics don't go or other denominations. We got. But God does care. Yes. And then some of the churches are beautiful. I love it. 
And we can kick them out and go in there. Oh, I love it. I would love it. Amen. All this wood, amen, and all this beautiful stuff. Amen. Just reminds of heaven. I love that. Stained glass, go to them. Amen. Some people like it, some people don't, but whatever. You understand what I'm saying? It's some, you can go into the presence, amen. You go to some of these churches and you just feel, wow. Oh, I can just sit here for a couple hours. But we got some Lutheran yeah. churches, amen? And some of the most beautiful churches. But yeah. My yes, wife and I, we got married in a Lutheran church, amen? Because we loved it, we wanted to say, this is it, this is it. Yeah. And what we got, let's have it here. Yeah. But we got, how many of God is into that? Amen. Don't let the light fool you. He's into the clothes that we wear. Yes. Yes. God gave Moses the instruction, mm -hmm. amen, of the robes and the garments that they were supposed to wear. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is in your Bible, glory to God. He didn't say, I don't care about all of that, Aaron. I don't care about the most. Just go up there as long as you want her. No, he didn't say that. Amen? And you see in the scriptures that people got in trouble when they were in the wrong clothing. Yes, when they were not wearing because it showed respect and it showed reverence. Yes, that's it. Look at God. The Bible says that even right now, Isaiah said, I saw, I saw God in his throne. And it says, in the trial of his robe, feel the temple. Yeah. How many know God is into all that? Hallelujah. Don't let nobody fool you. I know people go around and preaching t-shirts and all that. You won't ever see that here. Amen? Let them dress down there and make something like that. Amen? But how many know that's not, amen, how God wants us to be? Yes. Amen? Go to God. You can't go into a Fortune 500 meeting and t-shirt and flip-flops. So why are you going to get up, amen, in front of thousands of people and teach them the flip-flops and t-shirts? What point are you proving? What point are you proving? Go to God. You may prove a point. Amen. Go to God. Amen. How many know God, amen, demands respect? Go to God and yes. reverence. Yes, Lord. Yes. Go with me today. Amen. Go to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And how many know, praise God, if God calls you to this, you ain't going to argue about it. Yes. Because he made you for this. Amen. <laughs> no matter what kind of jobs, what we got, I have, amen, people, they, they know that something's going on with me with the ministry without even talking to me. I mean, because I'm in there, my shirt is buttoned up. Go to God, I'm proper. Go to God, they're like, what do you do? What do you do, my brother? Then they find out about the church. Why are you all in the church? Oh, I knew it was something. Go to God. Because of the way I carry myself. Yes. Go to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, in the course of this conversation with Moses, God instructed the people through Moses to build the tabernacle. And these events took place over 1,500 years before the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit, let me say, and, uh, and God's Spirit, you know, was residing in that tabernacle. Yes. Now, God gave specific instructions for building the tabernacle, including the plans for the tent itself, including the courtyard, including the consecration of the priest, the priest's garments, uh, and even the furniture. Um, the rich materials to be used in the construction were to be donated as an offering from the people. And you get that from Exodus 25. And then, and in the end, the people were generous. And in Exodus chapter 36, which is the next chapter after this, it says that they bought more than was needed. Yes. How I many know it's wonderful to be amongst a, a bunch of people, and then that want to be a blessing. Amen. That wants, amen, God to be lifted up. Yes. I don't want God to be looked down on. Amen. amen. Yes. I don't want people to put us down. I don't, because if they put us down, how many are they putting God? Yes. Well, amen. Oh, that place is a shack. It's a hole in the wall. It's a such a no, we don't want that. Amen. That's why we we don't come in here, amen, and chewing gum and putting gum under the seat, amen, and eating and dropping stuff on the floor and all that kind of stuff. We have respect and reverence. For the temple. I know Mother does it like that. So you say, you say, Amen, Mother. Amen. She don't like that. Glory to God. How I many know we supposed to have respect? Yes. Glory to God. When I come up, you couldn't eat anything in the sanctuary. Yes. Glory to God. And then you had to sneak a piece of candy in your mouth when I was a little kid coming up in the church. Glory to God. And then now we we'd be slurpy, have slurpies up in there. We just, you know, the pastor see everything. People be eating their sandwich. <laughs> like, I just saw you take a bite of, your, of, your, of the Big Mac, whatever it is. I saw you. I mean, we do. Amen. But when you have respect, good job, praise God, you don't do that. Amen. You don't do that. Amen. amen. Why? Because if you do it, amen, we might think we're up here. How many of somebody else will do it? Yes. yes. You can't ever come back and say, no, I want you no food and nothing to be. You do it. Come on, Pastor. Good job. Your respect level, amen, is what somebody else is going to learn, amen, and imitate. Glory to God. So, God told Moses that many craftsmen were going to be needed for his work. 
And then he told Moses that he had given men, he had given many men the skills that they would need to bring his plans for the tabernacle to fruition. What I love about God is that when he gives you a vision, he always provides provision. All right. All right. Amen. He never gives you a vision without yes. giving you provision. Thank you. If there's no provision attached to a so-called vision, it's probably not. It's probably not. Now, it's not to mean that God's always not always, always going to tell you how everything is going to get done. But you need to know, amen, that God has some provision somewhere. Go to God. Amen. If he hasn't given it to you, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I just believe you want to do it. Amen. Amen. You may not come when I want you to come, but I know you want to come. One time. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you. Glory to God. So, two of these men God mentions by name Bezalel from the tribe of Judah, amen, and Ophuliah from the tribe of Dan. Amen. Bezalel, amen, is, a, is a, um, a special person to remember, amen, in the Bible. Amen. Bezalel is so special, amen, that cults have taken his name and used, amen, when you talk about Freemasonry and Masonry, whatever, they go back to scriptures like this and they use this. Amen. Oh, glory, amen. As far as the holy people, amen. Go to God, amen. To construct the temple of God, and they have made a whole religion off of it, amen. Go to God. We won't go there. Go to God, amen. It's cultish, it's cultish, amen. But how do you know? Go to God, amen. God can, He can, He can anoint you for more than just preaching, amen. Yes. The word of God, yes. amen. Come on. God can anoint you for whatever He needs, yes. amen. In the kingdom of God. The Bible lets us know, I just read it to you, amen, that the Spirit of God was in him yes, yes. for the work. Yes. And that's why you got to know who you are in God. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. It's not always, you're going to have the mic, and I say to you, it ain't that. Your gift might be building, beautifying the temple of God. Yes. Your gift. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I can do the floors. I can, I can, I can tell you, I can do these windows, Pastor. I can listen. Oh, you know, the audio, I can take the audio to another level. Amen. I'm so good with speakers and all that. I'm so good with whatever the case is. Amen. God anoints us. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. But listen, Pastor, you ain't never going to sing praise and worship again. But God has anointed me for that. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Just let me do it. Let me have a team. I got you. Glory to God. Praise to God. You gotta know how God has anointed you. Yes. Yes. God, the pastor, you ain't got that keyboard again. God has anointed you to play the keyboard. Everybody over there. Yes. Come on. I'm just playing the drum. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You've got to know how God has anointed Speak you. Yes. There's so many Bezalels in here. Mm. And, then, and that are not here this morning. Glory to God. Praise to God. But you have to know how God is working in you. Yes. Look at God. Amen. Amen. And how many of you know, look at God, and then God can work in you in a certain way for a season. Right. Amen. Yeah. God, and then He can shift you to something else. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So true. Amen. Because I mean, He can say, This is what I need you to do for, for yeah. these couple of years. Yes. Then I want you to train somebody now, shifting you over here. Yeah. And you got to be okay with that. Go to God. Amen. God, whatever you want to do. When I was in the military, Amen, they told you that you are serving at the knees of the army. Right. Amen. And this is exactly what happened. Glory to God. Amen. When he was finished with me at one post, and then one unit, I had to go to another unit. I couldn't even fight it. Glory to God. Amen. When I met my wife, when we got married, she moved with me three times. Glory to God. Amen. She met me at the end of my career. Glory to God. You can't do anything about it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You're, you're serving at the needs of the army, the United States Army. Amen. And in the kingdom, it's the same way. Amen. Glory to God. You're serving at the need of God. Amen. You're serving at the need of God. Whatever he wants to do, you have to be able to say, God, whatever you want to do, you, know, you can do it. Amen. And whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, please don't do it without me. Amen. Anybody ever pray that way? Amen. I hope you mean it. Yes. If you listen to it, you're going to say, okay, yes. don't worry, I ain't going to skip you. <laughs> this is what I want you to do. Now, are you going to be obedient? Is the yeah, that's it. That part. Can I say that part? That part. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, they were, they were anointed for this. Amen. Verse 31 says, Amen. See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. Y'all you know what Judah means? Praise. praise. Judah means praise. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. So I believe that he just had a great attitude. Yes. And then while he in there, you know, oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has Put that over there. Hey, how you doing? Come on. Yeah. Glory to God. He was gifted yes. for his position. God said, choose him. Yes. And he and he says he's going to train everybody else. Right. Come on, yes. sir. Everything that God does, he does decently and in order. Yes. My 
God. It ain't no, I just want to do this because. No. Mm -hmm. Everything that God does is decent and in order. Don't worry. Ain't nothing going to fall down because you ain't doing your thing. Don't worry. Just slow your roll. Be decent and in order. God got this. It ain't going to fall down. Amen. It's going to be okay. Glory to God. Amen. And it says, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God. Is that in your Bibles? Yes. He has filled him with the Spirit of God. Well, let nobody tell you, we went over to the ministry training yesterday, it meant that the Holy Spirit was not in operation in the Old Testament. Yes. It, he was. Yes, he was. Yes. Don't let nobody tell you that he was not in his people. Yes. Amen. Because he was. The only difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is that God chose the people yes. who God, that he wanted to fill with his Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, how do we all? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Can experience. Amen. Glory to God. The indwelling. Amen. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Glory to God. But these were mighty men in the Old Testament. Yeah. They, did, they did great things that you don't see in the New Testament. Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit fell on them. And in some scripture says the Holy Spirit was in them. Yes. Informed them. Glory yes. to God. Bezalel had the Holy Spirit. Yes. Not for preaching. Mm. Not for being on a corner or nothing like that. Right. To build the house of God. Oh, yeah, listen to this morning. Yes. yes. God, how have you gifted me? What have you gifted me for? Yes, my God. I was with Bishop Dr. Palmer and then for 17 years. Glory to God. Praise God. I didn't start off preaching. Glory to God. Amen. That's how I was a preacher. Glory to God. And he saw that. He knew my dad. Glory to God. He knew where all that. Amen. But I started off and then serving. I was deacon this, I was minister this, I was then I be later, later, year later, elder came later, and all of that passed came later. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. But I was the head of the singles ministry. Then I got married, I was the head of the marriage ministry. Glory to God. Then I was the head of this. I was the I was the youth minister. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. I was everything. I was security detail. I was the usher. Glory to God. I was whatever. And I loved it. Glory to God. God, whatever you wanted to do. I was the minister of music. Before Pastor Wayne came, I trained him. He took over. He's better than me. Glory to God. Pray to God. Whatever God wants. Yes. Whatever God wants. Glory to God. Pray to God. I know what was coming that day down the line. It's the promise I a little, but I wasn't worried about that. I was worried for it, as a matter of fact. Glory to God. I was just happy to be in the house of the Lord. So I was happy to serve. When I went home, when I slept at night, I know I, I gave God. I gave God my home. Yes. We did God. We had a good time today in church or whatever it was. Whatever you wanted me to do. Glory to God. I know I did my best. Yeah, yes, yes. I used my gifts. Mm -hmm. I already know I have a gift of administration. I have a gift of theater. I have all these different things. And I was able to utilize it wherever yes. was needed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody here with me this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. He has filled him with the Spirit of God. Yes. God has filled you mm. for whatever it is he needs to do. Right. Don't you lie to yourself and say, I can't do it. Right. You can do it. Yes. I can do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens me. Yes, you, you do the whole strength, you can't do it. Right. But through Christ, I can do this. Yes, yes. Anybody here with me this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Bezalel from the tribe of Chia. Amen. Who else came from the tribe of Chia? Yeah. David. Yeah. Right? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Right? Yeah. Ultimately, Jesus. Right? Yeah. We can go all the way back to the land. How many people? Amen. Yeah. Amen. The lion of the tribe of Chia. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God calls him, amen, for a specific work. Amen. Um, so God's spirit empowered Bezalel and Ohelia with talent and intelligence, giving them the ability to work in every kind of crafting, including woodwork, stonework, metalwork, engraving, embroidery, and weaving. And the spirits empowering gave Bezalel and Ohelia skill to work with the raw materials and to form the artistic designs. Amen. So if you read uh, further, and then two chapters later, we see that Bezalel was the one who constructed the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. He was special. Somebody said he was special. He's special. You got some people that do things, and then you got some people that are special. Oh, uh, praise the Lord, somebody. You have to be able to recognize the gift of someone. Yes. Amen. But we got, amen. It's that specialness, amen, in your gift that sets you apart. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. I'm not only going to do this, but I'm going to do it better. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you how to do this way. Yeah. Watch out the woman. Let me show you how it's done. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. But it's done well. Yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Amen. We were at the, uh, the women's conference. Amen. And the worship service took over. Amen. There are many parts of that service. Amen. Amen. But one part, amen, brother God, amen, um, our brother, amen, our minister Ainsworth, amen, brother God, he sat down to the keyboard and he just took over. Glory to God. Amen. And the Spirit of God moved. Yes. Amen. It moved for about 15, 20 minutes. Glory to God. Amen. And we were, some of y'all were there, amen, and just, it was hard to move on. Amen, brother God, amen. because of the skill and the anointing of his playing. Amen. Yes. Amen. He's a mystery as unto God. Amen, brother God. And, you know, I know a lot of people don't understand it. I am a, a mystery as well. And I was just taking it all in. And then we just kept looking at each other, winking eyes. I was like, keep it going. Don't say, like, stop. I said, don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> I said, no, don't stop. He even laughed. So I went up to the other side of the room so he couldn't look at me. I'm like, don't stop. <laughs> don't stop. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. Because you feel the wave of the anointing. Yes. Amen. And I knew the skill level. Amen. Brother God. Amen. Not everybody can do it. He didn't have no drums. He put the beat in on the, on the, on the keyboard that he had. Yes. So people were just going in there and they're thinking about that. They're just feeling the presence. Yes. But when God has put it in you, yes. I've been a part of it. I've been a person that has to have to create that moment. And then if you don't create it, but God uses you. Amen? Yes. Really yes. God. Amen? How do you, it takes a skilled person yes. to do that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's stuff that people don't think about. Amen? Right. Only the pastor and the man and other people think about that. Yeah, I'm going to do an event, but you didn't get no, you didn't get no musician. Praise the Lord. Some of you understand. Glory to God. You didn't get a musician. Glory to God. Amen. So how are we going to go to that next level? Yeah, you can, but you shoot yourself in the foot. Right. You bring in somebody from somewhere else. You want all this stuff to happen, but you didn't get a musician. Oh. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes. Just for senior leaders. You better spend the money. Glory to God. If you can't play yourself, you better spend that 400 yes. 500 dollars somebody and get a musician, at least for that service. Well, we got to man, because there's something about music in God. Yes. yes. You better preach Come on. Music can yeah. get into your spirit without your yes. permission. Y'all always going to be preached. Yes. Glory yes. God. And then, and then, glory God. And then, Satan was the chief musician in heaven. Yes. 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 Lucifer was the chief musician in heaven. And then, and, I don't know, and he, got, he got so puffed up with it. He was so prideful yes. because of the atmosphere the that he was able to create. Yes. Yes. None of us understand what the aura is around the real throne of God. They say there's angels, we got the four beasts around them, we got the angels, the angels with all the wings and all the eyes. They say the holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, who is to come. You got the we got the river, and then that looks like a transparent river right before the throne. And you start thinking about the throne room, and then I'm sure if you walk in, it's like, you know, it's just aura. Yes. And whoever creates that, the angels that's responsible for creating that aura. And then somebody said they had experience of going to heaven. They said the music they heard in heaven is not like unlike anything they ever heard. Yes. They, they wish they could remember it. Yes. That's how powerful the music is. Yes. Glory to God. And then we, it's just something we can't understand. Glory to God. And then for those of us who understand the science of music, how many notes there is, there's notes that we have never heard of. Can you imagine yes. that? Just like there's colors that we've never seen. Yes. Can you imagine that? Yes. You don't want to miss heaven. Heaven is going to be crazy. There's so much stuff that we don't, we just can't comprehend because we have never experienced it. Yes. And, man, and some of it's right around us, but with our human eyes, we can't see it. Yes. With our human ears, we can't hear it. Yes. Uh, I don't want to go there today. But we got, that's why I got to go to heaven. Yes. <laughs> I ain't going to hell for no one. Ah, 70, 80, 90 years, how about God want me here? But get me heaven. I want heaven for eternity. Amen? Yes. I got to experience that. It's got to be better than any Harry Potter movie or any of that stuff you're watching that looks fantastic to you. Heaven is going to blow the yes. yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They were craftsmen led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And it shows us that God is in. Amen? And he's into beauty. Yes. Amen? And he's into design. Yes. Please hear me, young man and young woman. Glory to God. He is into how you carry yourself. Amen. amen. Don't just go outside, amen, without washing your face and brushing your teeth. Amen. amen. I, I can't stand the new look where young men are not combing their hair. It's like, this is good. That's great. Like, no. Put a, a, a pick in your hair. Put a comb in your hair. Brush your hair. Or, or let me twist that thing up or something. Do something. Right. Or shave it off. Do something with it. Do something with it. Go to God. And man, how you carry yourself, how you look, shows how you feel about yourself. Amen. Go to God. And then pull your pants up. Go to God. Yes. You walk around. Why do you want to see the drawers? Go to God. Yes. 
Amen. That you have not washed. You probably wore two, three days in a row and all that. Nobody wants to see that. You try to teach the young man that it came from prison anyway. Yeah, if you knew yeah. it came from, you wouldn't do it. Amen. When you were in prison, amen, you would let your parents hang out and let you know, I'm open. Yeah. I'm available for you. <laughs> That's nasty, right? Yes. So we got. Amen. And so what happens is people get out of prison, and then mostly in the hood or into the places, and they come out with the doctors and stuff in prison. So they walk around with no belt or work pants. Don't have no job. Go to God. Amen. And you can see all of that. Go to God. Because they were, amen, they were adult, they were something else when they were in prison. So yes. say like that. All right. <laughs> Go to God. They were open and they were available. Go to God. Amen. And so, amen, because some of us, amen, we're followers and we want to do what everybody else do. Now we're following, amen, a demonic tradition. Yes. Go to God. Hallelujah. So we see that God blessed Be Bezalel for the gift of what we call workmanship. Workmanship. Amen. In Ephesians 2 10, amen. Everybody who's going to a cornerstone class in here to go back and learn that, that verse. It says, For we are his workmanship created unto God for good things. May God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. And the Bible is basically letting us know that we are his masterpiece. Yes. Yes. That he formed us, amen, before he knew us before he placed us in our mother's womb. And everything about us, amen, glory to God. God designed us that way. Yes. Amen. I tell people I always wanted to be taller. Like I play basketball and I box, amen. But I needed the height for the basketball thing, amen. I had a scholarship. I didn't take it on the school but I was going to be all of this. Go to God, amen. But it hampered me. I used to pray, God, just let me be six feet. Let me be six one. That's one prayer, God, did not answer. Go to God. Praise God. But how do you know? Go to God, amen. I didn't let it damper me, amen. Go to God, amen. I still praise God that I'm a person. I still have a lot of confidence, amen. And he made me handsome. He made me strong. He made me, blah, blah, blah. You know, I believe so. Go to God. Praise God, I never had an issue with that department. But we got, amen, praise God. But he designed me. Why are you laughing at us, Reba? He designed me the way that he wanted me to be. Right? So I'm tall enough for you, right? Look, <laughs> no, I'm tall enough for my, my honey. Right? Look, we got, he's going to be okay. Look, we got, for a Joanna one day. Look, we got, amen, and I'll be just the right height. Look, we got, amen. 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 And I, I hope I'm hoping some young people, amen, because young yes. people go through stuff. Yes. Go to God. People are, they, they just, they, I wish, I, you know, yes. you know all this stuff out here. Right? Yes. You know, people go to other countries to get what they call DDLs. Oh, yes. Right? Oh, my God. You get the big butt. They, they put a small butt, come back with a big butt, right? Yes. Get, yes. DDL, what's it called? Am I saying it right? Yes. 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 Like, they want to get these surgeries, right? Yes. They come back with the big lips, big butt, all this kind of stuff in there. Like, girl, what are you? Yeah. Big breasts, yeah. Breast, butt, and lips. Yeah. All of that. Go to God. That, that's what the video said. Yes. Go to God. All of that. And then, how do you know you should be content with how God yes. designed you? Yes. Amen. If God wanted you to have big lips, he would have made you with big lips. If you wanted your butt bigger, he would have made you with a big old butt. Go to God. Go to God. I tell some people, say, just live a little bit longer. Don't worry, things are going to start growing. Don't worry. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. I still work out to this day, but I still wish I could get rid of some of this stomach. Like, Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Go yes. it, it's going to grow. Just, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> just wait. Glory to God. Amen. And you maybe try to tell her now, man. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. But it just means that you're not happy with how God made you. Amen. Amen. The enemy is working in that department. Right. So we got people are killing themselves because they're not happy about how God made them. Yeah. Are you looking at that? I know I'm making fun, but it's serious. serious. Yeah. That's why, and then you have to big up your young kings and queens that God yes. has placed in us. I don't care. Yeah. Look at that. This is my, my youngest daughter. She's a short thing. She's the shortest thing out there. I don't know. She's so beautiful. Yeah. Glory to God. Women don't need to be tall. Yeah. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And she has a great attitude about it. And she wants to be tall. I can tell. Praise God. Praise God. And then, you say she's shorter than she is, she said, No, I'm not. I'm five feet. Praise God. And she put those heels on and she, you know, you know, you know she wants to be tall. I get it. Go to God. I just, I just laugh. I look at my little daughter right now. Go to God. And then I remember me going through some stuff like that too. Go to God. Praise God. Praise God. My youngest son will have to go through that. He's taller than me. He's been taller than me since he was 14. Go to God. So he's not going to have to go through some of the things that I want. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. But we have to be okay with how God created us. Yes. Somebody say, I'm, I'm in love with how God created me. I'm in love with how God created me. I'm in love with me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Somebody say, I am gorgeous. I am gorgeous. Tell your neighbor, say, you are gorgeous. You are gorgeous. Hallelujah. It was a man who said, you are handsome. Say, you are handsome. Okay. Amen. So, look at y'all. So, we made a connection between the future between Ephesians 2 and Exodus 35. Yeah. And then where and then the, the, the New Testament basically let us know we are his workmanship. Yeah. 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 And then in the old and then praise God and then we understand and then that we had the gift of workmanship. God, the spirit and then came into you so that you can have the gift of workmanship. Right. Yeah. And then in the New Testament we are his gift. Yes. Yeah. We are that workmanship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So tell me it's better to be the gift than just to carry the gift. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I am the gift. Yes. Glory to God. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. God. Amen. I like how he used to say, yeah, I, I, I'm a business. Yeah. Amen. It's not just, glory to God. Amen. I have a business. I am the business. Yeah. Glory to God. And when you carry yourself that way, I mean, you know, you always will be blessed. Go to God. Amen. You have NFL players in here, and they learn, they've been there long enough, amen, go to God to realize, I am the business. Yes. I am the business. It's not that I'm just running the business. Go to God. Amen. I am the business. Go to God. Amen. We are the workmanship of God. Amen. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am God's masterpiece. And he loves me. He shaped me and he loved me just yes. like he made me. Yes. Come on. He didn't make no mistake with me. Yes. And, if, and if somebody in that is with you, go to God, especially if you keep yourself at your best and they don't like it, go to God. How do you know? Thank That's between them and God. Yes. That's between them and God. They're not the one for you. Amen. If you're keeping yourself at your best, go to God, at the best possible self, amen, and they got an issue with that, go to God. How do you know? You better keep on looking for the next one. Amen. Go to God. If they got problems with you now, imagine that you married 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 45, 45, 50, 55. Praise God. They were like, I got an issue. Go to God. Praise God. Go to God. They got to like you, amen, especially when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? An artisan is a worker in a steel trade, especially one that, that involves making things by hand. And that's what does a little buzz. Amen? Hallelujah. And so when you start seeing yourself as the masterpiece that God really created to bless this world and edify his people, that's when you will start to flourish. That's when you start to flourish. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that God has not made a mistake about me. And then I'm skinny and I'm owning this skinniness. And then I'm, I'm, I'm thick and I'm owning this thickness. And then go to God. Oh, how old would I be? I'm tall and I'm old, I'm short and I'm owning. Whatever. I'm owning. I'm going to make this look good. Amen. Go to God. Kevin Hart is the shortest thing out there, and, and, and he's doing pretty good. Yeah. Amen. He's, he's, he's a bit, you know, rich and all that. All that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Go to God. Praise God. Yeah, people twice the size is not as funny as him. Go to God. Amen. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Thank Give you your Jesus. best. Thank you, Lord. Give your best. Go to God. God will bless it. Yes. God will anoint it. Praise God, and God will bless it. A little boy had asked his dad one day. How big God was. He said, Daddy, how, how big is God? How big is God? And the look, um, and um, and with the with the father did, he looked at the sky, and then and he had a son, there was a plane in the sky, and he said, Son, look at the plane. He said, How big is that is that plane? And the little boy said, The plane is small, Daddy. He said, Is it? He said, it's small. He said, Okay. And so he took his son to the airport. And so in the airport, planes would come and land and pull it up right to the window where they are. He said, son, how big is that plane? He said, he said, wow, the plane is big, daddy. The plane is really big. And, and he said, he was explaining to his son, he said, these are the same planes that I was showing you when we was on the ground. Yeah. Oh, God. And, then, and he said, how big God is, is determined by how close you are to him. Jesus. How big God is, is determined, praise God, by your perspective of God. Lord God, to me, I serve a big, big, big God. Yes. I don't serve the small, yes. weak, puny, anorexic God. No, I serve a powerful God. Yes. And then, praise God, the heavens is his seat, the earth Hallelujah. is his footstool. Yes. And then he got the whole world in his hands, yes. the whole wide world in his hands. Glory to God, that's the kind of God I serve. I don't serve a weak God. I don't serve a 
serve a God that can't do what, what I need to be done. Amen. I serve a God, amen, that if he's for me, who can be against me? Yes. That's the kind of God I serve. Yes. But how you see God is determined by your perspective. Yes. How close are you to God? Well, yes. When you're close to him, how many know he's huge? Yes. And some of us, we don't have faith. We have little faith because we're far from God. Yes. That's the enemy trying to keep you and keep you away from church and keep you away from the things of God. That's the enemy to try to make you stop reading your Bible. That's the enemy that tells you you don't need to pray. They don't take all that. That's the enemy because he knows the further away the way that you are from God, the smaller God becomes. Right. Yes. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Hearing by the word of God. Yes. So if you're not hearing anything, you know, your faith is smaller and smaller, yes. and you get further and further away. Yes. That's why we discipline ourselves to come and to subject ourselves to be under the hearing of the Word of God. Amen. That's why preachers have to preach the Word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Amen? Praise God. Your position determines your condition. Yes. Hallelujah. The folks of the Word of God. Hallelujah, how they know your condition changes. Yes. Praise God. They can say cancer. They can say all these different things. Lord God. Amen. But if you close to God, it doesn't change your perspective. Yes. Amen. Amen. They threw, amen, uh, the three Hebrew boys, amen, into the fire in the furnace. Yes. Praise God. Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. I mean, an individual. Praise <laughs> God. And they, God. They threw them in. Look at God. Praise God. But how do you know they did not give up on God? My, my, my. Yes. God, if it's a look at God, you throw us in the fire, amen, look at God. But we know that God can save us, He yes. can put us in prison, He can keep us, even in the midst yes. of the fire. Come on. And even if He don't, He's still God. Yeah. That's what he's yes. look at God. That's the kind of faith that you gotta have. God, I know you can do it, but even if you don't, you're still God. Yes. God, I know you can do it, but even if you don't, I still trust you. Yes. I know you can do it, but even if you don't, I still love you. Yes. God, I know you can do it, but even if you don't, I'm still serving. Jesus. God, I know you can do it, but even if you don't, I'm still be in your face. I'm yes. still come and be in your presence. Amen. I'm not going to change up. I'm not going to switch up on you, God, because I know you can do it. Yes. If it be thy will, be it as unto me. Yes. Thy will be done Honor. on earth yes. as it is in heaven. Mm. Your perspective of God matters. Yes. So we must understand that God's method sometimes change, but his message never changes. Right. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. God does not always move the same way that he did yes. before. Yes. Yes. Ah, Praise the Lord. Yes. We gotta learn that lesson. Yes. Yes. Moses got in trouble with that. Yes. One time God moved, he said, hit the rock. <laughs> the water was supposed to come out. And he did that. The next time, Moses got so frustrated with the people, they meant when God said, I want you to speak to the rock this time. Right. Don't hit it. Speak to it. But he got so frustrated because the people was getting on his nerves. And he basically cussed everybody out and said, Y'all want water? Okay, I'm going to get y'all water. And he took the rock and he kicked the rock. And he got in trouble. Yeah. And it made God so mad that he, he was not able to take them into the promised land. Jesus. Water still came out. But it's not how God wanted it to be done. Oh, Are you here with me? Yes, sir. We got to do things the way that God yes. wants to be done. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And then, brother God, and then we have to be relational, yes. not transactional. That part. Oh, yes. Yes. So God. Yes. Praise yes. God. And then, how it gets done matters. Yes. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, all that. But what was the collateral damage in the process? Ah. That shows the level of your leadership. Yes. Look at God. How many people had to be hurt along the way? How many people had made it go along the way? Look at God. That's not how it's supposed to happen. Something is right. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We got to be relational. Yes. Glory to God. We got to make sure, glory to God, that we are in the will of God. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. His message stays the same. In the book of James, James 1, 16, it says, Do not err, my beloved brethren, verse 17, because every good and perfect gift comes from above. Yes. And comes down from the Father of lights, yes. with whom is no variableness, no change. The Father does not change, neither shadow of turning. I know we serve the same God. 
Thank you, Lord. He's thank God, you, Lord. Same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes, Lord. He is what we call immutable, which means he does not change. Wow. Well, Hallelujah. Now, his methods might change, but his message stays the same. Yes. Glory to God. So, who he is is who he has always been. Right. Glory to God. And it's important for us to understand that. Glory to God. I was talking to our ministers yesterday, ministers in training, glory to God. And I was saying that, amen, a lot of times people get confused between the New and Old Testament, Old and New Testament. They think it's a different Bible. Amen? But it's not. It's the same thing. The new is a continuation of the old. Right. They act like it's a different God. And God changed all up in the New Testament. It's a different God. The God of the New Testament is the same God of the Old Testament. Yes. Brother, what are you talking about? It's the same God. He has not changed. It's just a continuation. Jehovah is the same God in both the Old and New Testament. And so, in fact, many people confuse the New Testament with the New Covenant. Right. Yes. God didn't make a New Covenant with us. It's just the New Testament. Right. Praise God. I mean, it came during the time of Jesus Christ's life. That's all. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But it didn't change the old. Because everything that the old amen prophets and everybody did that was miraculous was used. They, they used the Old Testament to do it. Yes. Thank the you New Lord. Testament was never even written. And there's more spectacular stuff in the Old Testament than there is in the New. Yeah. Just with the Old Testament. Amen. So it's the same God. Is used in a different year. Yes, my God. Where we are. Amen. Yes. Same message, even though we might use a different methods. Yes. Where we are. Hallelujah. And we have to understand God has anointed us for some things. Hmm. I don't care what you're doing right now. Praise God. I don't care what kind of job you have. Say like that. Yes. Right now. I don't care what you do for a living. Right now, amen. God is actively right now trying to get you to walk in your purpose. Yeah, my God. You can be flipping fries, amen. Glory to God. They're done, they're ready, they're hot. Pick it up. Glory to God. It does not mean that God did not call you to the nations. Right. It does not mean, Glory to God, that God does not have a ministry in you. It does not mean that you can't serve. You know what I'm saying? I need something really silly out of the world. Hopefully, nobody flipping fries, amen. Glory to God. But you understand what I'm saying? I don't care what you do. I don't. Oh, man. I've done it. Go to God. Praise God. Amen. But we have to understand that your job is what you get paid for. Yes. Your calling is what you're made for. Yes. 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 Your job is what you get paid for. Yes. <laughs> your calling is what you are made for. Yes. Go to God. So don't get down on yourself. Hopefully, I'll help somebody this morning. Amen. If we are walking around with such so low self esteem, go to God. Amen. I don't care what you do. That's why I tell you what I do as a pastor. Amen. A lot of pastors act like they don't have a job, and you know that you got two or three jobs on the side. Amen. Amen. Because the church can't pay you. Right. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. We ain't here yet. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. But I tell people, yeah, I work over here. I do this. Praise the Lord. Amen. And how many know I'm still a full time pastor? Amen. Because you can't do this part time. It's full time. Y'all know I've been talking to a lot of y'all while I'm at the time. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> What's up? Oh my God, what's up? You hear me? Man, God, what's going on? You feel know, hold on, let me step out real fast. Mr. Green, though, he's probably laughing. Hey, right, hold on, man, God, let me be quiet. Let me get out of here. What's up? That's a full time job. Yes. It doesn't matter. Right. Glory to God. I'm sending texts to man and broke out while I'm at working at another job. Glory to God. Praise God. And he sent me in the Lord. Right. Glory to God. Amen. I mean, because I'm the best that I need to be for them. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But. That's just what you get paid for. That's not who I am. Amen. I don't care what the title is. Who cares? Amen. All I, all, I, all I ask God for is allow me to be in a position, and then that I can take care of my family. That's it. Amen. I don't care what the title is. So people are so hung up on it. I can care less. And then Peter, the apostle, he was a fisherman. Yes. He was a fisherman by trade. Yes. yes. Glory to God. And then even when Jesus was resurrected, when they found him, we, we go, we get an adjustment. What was Peter doing? He was fishing with all the other apostles. Yeah. He was still the leader. They were following him in the water. And Jesus was going to face her. Hey, I got some fish. Yeah. <laughs> what they was doing, he was naked out of his boat. He had to put his clothes on. He was a fisherman. Paul, they say, even after Paul uh, was converted, glory to God, amen. And I told you last week that he didn't preach for three years. Gamaliel had to teach him and change some things on him. They say that he was a tent maker. <laughs> so he would stop in these different cities and he would put his sign down or whatever. And he made tents. That's how he made money to fund his missions. Right. All right, y'all, you're with me today. I'm giving somebody some wisdom because we are, we've been taught so, so much baloney. Yeah. 
so much that everybody's trying to teach you. And this is gonna, yeah, this is gonna make room for you. And this is, this is how get a job. Come on, get a job or get two jobs if you need to. Glory to God. That's how God's gonna make a way for you. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. We ain't trying to make big names out of the ministry. God can do what He wants. Yes, you can do that. Glory to God. Praise God, and, we're, and everything can take care of us. Glory to God. Amen. But, but before, if God is not doing that for you now, get a job. When pastors, when they call me and they want to be mentored, amen, I, I hit that point. Where you working at, brother? <laughs> so we got married you want your wife and got some issues finance. Why are they working? Amen. Oh, well, the ministry, why are you not working? Yes. Get a job. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes. Get a job. Oh, why God can still bless you in the ministry. Get a job. Amen. Go to God. Amen. Let God do the rest of that. Yes. Let God do the rest of that. Yeah, he can make you a household name. You can do that. Go to God. But until then, you better get a job. Amen. Hallelujah. They were both two of the greatest apostles that ever lived. But don't confuse what you do with who you are. Yes. And just because you can't see yourself doing your dream job or going on your dream trip or producing your dream invention or you're writing that book or that dream song that you had or whatever it is, it doesn't mean that God isn't going to allow it to manifest one day. Amen. Can I encourage you this morning? Amen. Keep on believing. Amen. Amen. Just Jackson used to say, keep hope alive. Yes. Keep hope alive. And you know, we start making fun of them, but that's some of the most powerful words to put together. Amen. Because if the devil can defeat you at the place of your hope, yes, Lord. he has defeated yes. you. That's why people are drinking crack, crack addicts or fentanyl addicts now, whatever it is now, cocaine addicts, whatever, um, because he had defeated them. They had no hope. Right. That's when you say, I'm just going to end this. I'm just going to whatever, because now you are in despair. You have become desperate. Yes. And you just think that God is not, never going to turn it around for you. Mm. No, he's going to turn it around for you yeah. at his time. Hang on in here. Thank you, Jesus. Hang on in here. Hang on in here. Turn your neighbor and say, hang on in here. Hang, hang on in here. here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, sometimes the things that we cannot see are the realest things in existence. Amen. How many know we can't see angels, but they're real? We can't see demons, but they're real. Yeah. Glory to God. We can't see the wind, can we? We can't see air. Glory to God. But how many know all of this is real? Yes. We can't see it, but it's there. Yes. Glory to God. The wind is like the breath of God. You know that? Breathing on us all the time. All the time. He's. Yes. And right now, they're breathing and come on, breathing some of that breath. Yes. Like, come on, That's the breath of God. Yes. The Bible says he created Adam before them and then he, he blew in them. Yes. We're all alive because the breath of God is yes. in us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's why it's illegal for you to stop that breath. Jesus. You can't kill yourself out of that. It's the real. You won't go to heaven if you do that. You can't do suicide if you won't go to heaven. It ain't gonna happen because God has his anointed breath. Jesus. He blew in you. Yes. He blew in you. Yes. Yes. Sometimes women have babies, and the baby come out and it's quiet. They cry. You gotta smack the baby on the butt and all that. Amen. And I believe the angel just you know. Yes. In fact, the Hebrew word is ruach. Yes. 
the ruach, the breath yes. of God. Mm. That's the reason in the Old Testament, in the, in the New Testament, in the Greek word, pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma, the pneuma of God. Yes. Amen? And it can be translated as wind or spirit. All right, so ruach is the Hebrew word for the breath of God. And he blew the ruach into Adam. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not so much a physical force, but it's an essence. Yes. God's essence sustains life. Yes. It's also sometimes translated as a spirit of God, as we see in Genesis chapter 1. Amen. We talk about it. Amen. I'll be us. Amen. The three breaths of God. The three breaths of God. There were three breaths. From God that shaped humanity. The first breath brought humanity to life. Yes. So we got the blue. Amen. And then we have the breath that redeemed humanity from sin. Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. He said, It is finished. Glory to God. And then the third breath that continues to shape the course of human history as we know it today. Amen. At Pentecost. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The breath of God came in. Glory to God. And they started prophesying to each other and clothing in tongues. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. The world began when God, the creator of everything, said, let there be light. Yes. My God. And it was. Glory to God. And it was so. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We see that Jesus used the breath a lot. Amen. He used the wind a lot in his ministry. Glory to God. In John 20, verse 22. Amen. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. And when he had said this, it says he breathed on them and said, to them receive the Holy Spirit. This is after he was crucified and resurrected. Amen. And basically, he gave his disciples, his apostles, a little Pentecost experience before Pentecost even happened. Right. It says, receive the Holy Spirit. And he breathed them. Amen. I'm trying to teach us something today. Don't don't zone out on this part. Amen. Especially to those that want to be closer to God and that really want a deeper level of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The wind is important. Yes. Please hear me on this. Hallelujah. This is a reminder of an act of a sequence in Genesis where the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, the agent of God, the breath of life, where it says, Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. <laughs> Something about the breath, the wind. And the man became a living creature. Without the breath of God, nothing lives. First yes. Corinthians 15 45. It says, Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam became a living spirit. Yeah, the first Adam, the last Adam was Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. And so, glory to God. I talked to you about Pentecost, glory to God, amen. Praise God. 9 a.m. In, in, in the morning, a Russian wind came, glory to God, and, and people were saying that these people are drunk, glory to God, amen. And they were saying, no, they ain't drunk. This is what was prophesied by Joel in the Old Testament, glory to God, and now it is the manifestation, amen. And the breath of God, amen. And the, and the miracle was, amen, is that people prophesied to each other. In their own language. If you spoke Russian, you spoke German, if you spoke whatever, Swahili, if you spoke English, you spoke French, right? amen, and you don't speak any other language, but now you're, you're speaking, but I understand you in my language, I mean, um, that's called the gift. Amen. That's, amen. that's one form of what we call the gift of tongues. Yes. It's not just an unintelligible language, a heavenly language. Amen. There is a form of, of, of tongues, but we got, amen, where it's you're literally speaking. Uh, uh, earthly language. God can do that. We have we have missionaries, Amen, that will come back, Amen, and testify that they were in remote villages. They know the language. God, the Holy Spirit, fell on them, and they start speaking in the language of the of the native tribe that they were in, and they understood. The gifts is, is a is a is an awesome awesome gift that we want from God. Amen. The woman of God, Amen, gave it, uh, gave a testimony, Amen, I mean, uh, ministry of Trace Rail, and we go to God, how God used her in that way, Amen. One time, go to God. I mean, God can do that. Go to God. God operates like that. Go to God. Five elements. Go to God. Earth, water, fire, air, space, or I like to say the last one, spirit. Some people say space. I say spirit, but whatever it is, five main elements. Go to God. There's some traditions that take it further. Eight elements, twelve elements. Go to God. But how do you know? Air is the most important natural element. Yes. yes. The wind. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Because you can go for days without work. You can go for days without food. You can go for days without, amen, fire. You can go for days without, but if you can't go but two, three minutes without air. Yes. Anybody hear me today? Yes. 
I need air. <laughs> praise God. Some H2O. Praise God for that <laughs> equation. But we God, that's why Earth is, amen, a blessing, amen, and, and all of our known atmosphere. But we got to be, <sighs> amen, astronauts, amen, when they go somewhere else, what they got to do? They got to put on a spacesuit. Mm -hmm. They want to move, but they, they take that space, they take that helmet off. Go to God. And astronauts such as us did not make it back. Yeah. Because he took his helmet yeah. off. Go yeah. to God. The air is the most, amen, go to God, important yeah. element. Go to God. All plants and animals need yeah. air. Yes. Need yeah. oxygen to carry out various yeah. metabolic uh, activities. Without oxygen, we cannot breathe and life on earth will end. You know, we can't even make a sound without air. I'm talking to you right now because there's air present. Yeah. Amen. If you were to put me in, in, in a chamber where there's no air, I would be trying to make a noise, but no noise would happen. The, my voice box, amen, amen, is emitting, amen, some, some, some sound that is, is reverberating off of the sound waves that is in the air that's, that's being carried on the wind. It's amazing. God is amazing. Yes, he is. He's the great designer. Yes, Lord God. Is. Praise God. Respect the wind. I'm helping somebody today. Listen to the wind. Yes. Do you know you can hear God in the wind? Yes. He's hearing. Mm -hmm. He's hearing. Glory to God. Amen. I'm going to give y'all some stuff. This is some high level stuff, Glory to God. Amen. For things that people don't want to know. Amen. How many know if the wind, if you're, if you're out there and you're listening to God, for, those, for these people, for people who know how to meditate, Glory to God, if the wind falls silent, how many know you should be quiet because the wind might be listening to you? Yes. If you're ever meditating, Amen, glory to God. Amen, glory to God. Psalms wants to bless you as a man that meditate. Amen, glory to God. Day and night. Glory to God. Amen, glory to God. Amen. If you ever go to the mountains, like sometimes I do, especially now with the military, and pray. Yes. Glory to God. And sometimes you get when the wind is right, and when it's quiet, you need to be quiet. Glory to God. Because sometimes the wind is listening to you. Be very careful of your next words. Yes. The Bible teaches us, amen, that we are going to give and count for every word. How is that going to happen? So now we got angels follow us, but also the very elements, the ground, amen, glory to God, amen, is writing stuff about us. The air is writing stuff about us, amen. Glory to God, amen. There are things that's going to blow your mind when you get to heaven. When Jesus walked, amen, when he came to Jerusalem and they tried to make the children be quiet, he says, don't shut them up because if they don't, the very rocks will cry out. Glory to God. Speak when that happens. But always whisper. Whisper. In case if there's a wind swirl carrying leaves, autumn leaves, I mean, oh, you should not go in there and break that up. That's the wind dancing. That's the wind. You should step back and let her dance. Don't go outside if the wind is howling. Glory to God. Amen. Um, if you can help it. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. That's not the time to be willy nilly. Amen. Because there's a lot of spiritual activity going on. Amen. Help somebody. I know some people don't, don't appreciate this stuff, but if you're a minister, amen, and if you understand everything is spiritual, you'll carry yourself differently. Yes. So, God, hallelujah. The wind already knows everything about you. Yes. So, there is no sense lying to it. Never lie. But, we God, but, we God, that's why the flute, amen, is, is a part of every heavenly orchestra. Yes. The lie of the flute, if you read the scriptures. Amen. Listen to storm. My first book is called Reverence for the Storms. Mm. Reverence for the Storm. Lord God. And I put a lot of stuff there. I put the names of some of the winds, amen, in the book. Amen. And it blew some people's minds. They didn't know that I was there. It's there. Lord God. Especially when you go to the book of Enoch and some of these other books. Lord God. It's all out there for us already. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. But, amen, the, the enemy tries to water down our spirituality that yes. we call religion so much. That we don't think we need to know any of this stuff. Yes. You gotta go to another culture for them to talk about these different things. Come on, come on. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. There's sometimes, amen, when I was young, when stories would happen, we had to get quiet. The old family knew about that. You had to be quiet. They had to turn off all the TV, all the electricity, and then put light a candle, you'd be at the window. Dad wasn't going to be praying. Please bring Daddy back home safely for what? In Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm going to be my sister praying. I need to leave. He came. It worked. It worked. Glory <laughs> oh to God. You know? But it was holy hush. She 
she taught us to have reverence. Mm. A lot of us, we're so loud. We get into things because we carry ourselves loud. Mm. The wind is what gives life to our words. Again, if there is no air, I can't stop to you. Amen? You wouldn't be able to hear me. You wouldn't be able to make a sound either. Look at God. So make your words meaningful. Especially when you talk to her, when you talk to the wind. Look at God. Amen? If, if, if the wind is, if, so if you're on the outside and the wind is like whispering in your ear, it's like, shh. Look at God. Amen? She's whispering in your ear. This thing goes closer. closer. Listen. It could be God is trying to talk to you. I'm trying to help somebody. Please don't think this is silly. It means that she trusts you enough to share her secrets. <laughs> Words travel far and fast. So don't say anything that could await a spirit that you don't want to deal with. <laughs> uh, uh, winds have temperaments. You know that? And winds can get anger, anger easily. Now, this might sound real weird at Christian church, amen. If I'm talking to a bunch of witches and all that, they'd be like, yeah, let me tell you the spell I use for this. Let me tell you, amen, they know how to do the winds and all of that kind of stuff, amen. Amen. I can tell you stories, amen, about people, amen, that have uh, tornadoes and hurricanes come at them, and they pray and it went around them. They skip, they skip over them, amen. And everybody else's, everybody else's house is done, is done, and then people are dead, amen. Glory to God, amen. Praise God, it's on tape, it's on tape, glory to God, amen. The winds, listen. The winds, amen, the Bible teaches us, amen, that the winds are actually spirits. In the book of Enoch, it says that God took Enoch and showed him where the winds are stored up at. There's a storeroom for the winds and the rains and the, and the lightning and the thunder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, pay attention to the I'm going to stop right there. I'll give this too much. Holy God. Just pay attention. When you feel the wind, pay attention. This is stuff that people are on a certain level. You are always. I remember I was preaching in Africa a couple weeks ago, amen. Right after I finished preaching, it started raining outside. Mm. I wasn't the only one that noticed it. It was a different type of rain. It was different. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And people were at the door just looking. Amen. Because we opened up something. Amen. But we got I was talking to the principalities and the powers in the air. The mind covenants and all of these different things come in, we're not, and it broke something. And it was a release in the atmosphere. And then one of the prophets that was there, as soon as I sat down, if I was if the chair was not behind me, he would have tackled me. Right, so he came and fell at my feet and he blessed my feet. Oh God, because something has shifted. Glory to God. You have to be one with the creation. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. When you see Jesus, how the way he operated, amen, he stopped on the ground and he rolled on the ground. When they cooked the one before the adultery. At one point, he took some he took some dirt and he spit it and he put it on the person. When you look at how Jesus operated, he worked with the nature. Yes, yes, he did. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So just listen and pay attention when you have a sudden draft. If you don't have to go somewhere, you probably want to turn around and go back in the house. Yeah. That's a bad one. And never ever complain about the wind. Yes. My Lord. Because the wind will always remember. Mm, Jesus. I praise God that he will make sure that I am everywhere that I'm supposed to be. Amen. I don't have to worry about it. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Because God is the one that has, wrote, has written the story of my life. Yes. He's ministering to me. Differently, lady, amen. He knows the beginning and he knows the end. Yes. It's already written. So he's going to make sure that I'm exactly where I need to be, right. where I need to be, as long as I'm obedient. Yes, Lord. As long as I'm obedient. Yes. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 20, 20 22, and 23. Wind it down. It says, The least one shall become a clan, the smallest one of my nation. I am the Lord. In this time, I will hasten it. The smallest family will become a thousand people, mm. and the tiniest group will become a mighty nation. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Right. God is a God of timing. Yes. If it hasn't happened for you, it's not time yet. All right. Those of you waiting for a husband, if you don't have it yet, it ain't your time yet. Right. You don't have a wife, it's not your time 
met. Wait on God. You know what? I'm so bad. You know, I high five right there. Amen. Wait on God. Wait on God. Amen. He got, he got it for you. He got it for you. In his time. In his time. Don't fight the wind. The leaf doesn't fight the wind. It goes wherever the wind blows it. I'm helping somebody. Stop fighting against the wind. It's the Holy Spirit. Blowing you where you want you to go. My God. Sometimes the blend, the, the wind will blow you, blow that leaf away from the tree. Right. Yes, Lord. Look at God. The leaf can say, no, I don't want to go away from the tree. Yeah. They got to flow with the wind. Yes. Yeah. One time it lands in the car, and now your car is going 100 miles away. No, I don't want to go with the tree. Yeah. Wherever the wind takes me. Yes, Lord. Wherever the wind takes me. Don't be scared when it seems like life is blowing in a direction that you don't think that you're supposed to go. Oh you will wind up exactly where God in His infinite wisdom wants you to. In the meantime, don't give up on God. Amen. Don't give up. Don't forget the promises that you made to the Lord. Right. Amen. Go to God. And God will forget about you. Yes, Lord. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've been talking to you about covenants, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been talking to you, amen, about vows. Yes. Remember all the vows that you made to God. Hallelujah. Remember all the vows you made to God. In Deuteronomy 23, it says, If you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not be slow to pay. Mm -hmm. For the Lord your God will certainly demand it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. Right. If you ain't going to do it, don't tell God you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't make a vow about it. Amen. But if you refrain from making a vow, you will not be guilty. Whatever your lips utter, you must be sure to do. Because you made your vow freely to the Lord, your God, with your own mouth. That's Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 21 to 23. As I told you, sometimes we get in trouble because we talk too much. Talk too much. Talk too much. I hide some of these verses deep in my heart. Amen? But through all of this, if we know, if we hear ourselves in this lesson today, we know, you know, we all sometimes find ourselves lacking. I just say this to you. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Amen. It's time to get up. And it's time to move on. Glory to God. It's time to move on. If you messed up, it's okay. It's a new day. It's a new opportunity to ask God for forgiveness. Amen. And forgive, forgive yourself. Maya Angelou says, forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it. We say it again. Forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it. A lot of us, we operated in a certain way because we didn't learn it yet. We didn't know it yet. But now that we know better, we can do better. The last verse I'll leave with you for today is in the book of Revelations. Revelation chapter 5. Uh, this time is Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Revelation, amen. The scripture the book of Revelation says, Blessed is any man who reads this book. Yes. Revelation chapter 5. And I'm going to read verses 1 to 6. And it says, And I saw in the right of the hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seal thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, even to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open it to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereon. Somebody should be praising God right here. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all of the earth. Yes, Lord. There's more to read, but I'm going to stop right there. Jesus. The seven spirits of God that has been sent forth into all the earth. The Bible 
Bible says, for you to worship God, he said, they that worship me must worship me in spirit, spirit and, and, truth. and in truth. And in truth. Yes. Lord God, yeah, we need to make a sound. Yeah, we need to do these different things. Amen. But make sure you are doing it from your spirit. Yes. And make sure, amen, you are living a life of integrity. Yes. Lord to God. These seven spirits are symbolic of the Holy Spirit as the eminent executive of the purposes of God. And how many of these spirits, amen, are lingering around us each and every single day? Yes. Mm. I got to get it there for today. Jesus. What God has placed in you is to be a blessing to the kingdom. Yes, Lord. What God has for you is for you. Yes. It's not for the brother, not for the sister, Thank not for the mother, not for the father. It's for you. Thank you. Lord. God. So don't let another person's life, another person's choice, Stop you from reaching your blessing. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. We can do what God called us to do. And still have all the relationships that mean so much to us. But you have to make the people in this circle understand that to live is Christ for me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Whatever God is calling me to, I got to do it. And I'm not going to let anybody stop me to include yourself. I pray that the Bezalel spirit that we talked about today will rise up in all of us. God anointed him, praise God, to build the tabernacle. God anointed him to make the clothes. God anointed him to put all to break to make all of the stuff that went in the temple. Then God later anointed him to build the actual ark of the covenant that housed. The presence of God. Jesus. His name is in the Bible. You don't know what it is that God has placed in you that might make the angels start singing your name in heaven. Mm. Don't miss your blessing yes. while you're here on earth looking at how other people operate. Yes. There are a lot of people operating in things that you are coveting that they're not even supposed to be doing. Mm. God's not even impressed. I didn't call them to that. Yeah, they got that tire here, but I didn't call them to that. Amen. Make sure that you are doing what you're doing. And lastly, I say, keep your eyes on yourself. Yes. Keep your eyes on yourself. Too many people will be so fast and come up and talk about other people. This person, and I just want to say, can I just say, how about you? How about you? Wow. What are you doing? What have you done? Right. And what do you intend to do? Yes. With God. You, is God calling you up here? Thank you, sir. I'm going to take this. Amen. She blessed me. She blessed me. She blessed me. I praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm, putting this, I'm putting this in my pocket. You know, you preach your girl when you need to bring money up to my own. Amen. I'll receive that. Hallelujah. God is speaking to his baby. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Anybody need prayer? Also, it's all. Amen. Come to God. Amen. I just want to make sure that everyone is here. Amen. Is saved. That if you're watching, that you're saved. Amen. The Bible says, Amen. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Go to God. And so it's no good to come to church, Amen. But you have not, Amen, made that confession with your mouth and sin, repentance in your heart, and so that you can be what we call saved. Amen. So if you're watching my brother, amen, and my sister, amen, on TV land, video land, amen, I want you to just say the prayer with me. If you're here, if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, I invite you to come on up, amen, today. Or raise your hand if you go right from your seat, amen. But the prayer goes like this, Father God, Father God, it's me, it's me, your child, your child, Lord God, Lord God, forgive me, forgive me, for all of my sins, for all of my sins, known and unknown, known and unknown. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Be my Lord and personal Savior. I choose life. I choose life. I reject death. I reject death. I choose heaven. I choose heaven. I reject hell. I reject hell. Please write my name. Please write my name. In the Lamb's Book of Life. 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 In the
Welcome, amen, to the family. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You are now what we call Christian. Amen. Go to God. I invite you, amen, to find a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. Get in there and allow yourself to be disciple. Amen. For Jesus Christ. Go to God. Amen. If you're here, if you've never officially joined this church, you'd like to join it. Amen. Go to God. Amen. The doors of the church is open. Go to God. Hallelujah. Go to God. Be blessed God. Be blessed God. Be blessed God. Hallelujah. I praise God for each and every single one of you. And then go to God. To my wife, go to God. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. God says, be encouraged. Be encouraged. You have big energy. Go to God. And the energy that is on your life, the ruach, the numa that's in you, is so big that it irritates anybody who does not know God. It irritates anybody who is off. They can, they can know about God, but if they're off, it irritates. If the enemy has been trying to discourage you. Go to God. Amen. And literally, go to God, um, act out and lash out against you. Go to God. It's not because, go to God, amen, you are doing something wrong. Amen. It's because of the spirit that's in you. And so God, from this point on, is going to teach you even more. You are at a high level in the spirit. Go to God. And God is using you for many things. Go to God. But he's going to teach you how to marshal your energy. How to marshal the Holy Spirit that's in you. Go to God. You have big energy. That same energy you have, your granddaughter has. Grand is all. She has it. Go to God. I see that. Go to God. Go to God. Amen. And so, continue to be who you are. Don't let nobody change you. Go to God. The enemy, amen, is rising up, amen, even to be aggressive towards you. Go to God. Because he wants to discourage you. For God says, the angels in heaven, go to God, he has dispatched mighty, holy angels. Go to God. The message I gave today, pay attention to the wind. He's going to take you to even another level in the spirit realm. You think you've been prophesying to this point? He's about to take you to another level. Another level. You ain't going to have to try. And it ain't going to have to be you. Go to God. It's going to be God in you. So be encouraged. He just wanted me to encourage you today. Go to God. He loves you. He got you. He got you. You don't have to. Listen. He said, Vengeance is mine. Say the Lord. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. To anybody that touch you the wrong way, God says, I'm going to deal with them personally. I'm going to deal with them personally. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. 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 Let's stand up on our feet. We want to give God seven hallelujahs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll let you go home and eat your fried chicken and collard greens. Glory to God. While we cheer for the people's glory to God. Amen. On today. On the count of three, we want to give them hallelujah. Amen. One, two, three. Hallelujah. 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 Delay, I'll destroy every delay. And even by the covenant we made, we cancel it. 
any black magic, any voodoo, any oil, any juju, any santaria, any rupert, any war crest, any african against us. We bind it now in the name of Jesus, and we send it back to cinder. We bind it to cinder with the blood of Jesus. We bless you today, Father God. Lord. Oh God, I pray God that we will have dreams tonight. Speak to us, God. Speak to us in our dreams. Some of you will have dreams. Oh God, open it up. Open up the portals from heaven. Open it up. Open it up. Oh God, speak to them in their spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, open it up. And God, as we have these dreams, I pray God we will wake up and we will not forget them. Jesus. We will write them down. And we will be able to interpret our own dreams. In Jesus' mighty name. We bless you today. I pray God that you grow. I pray that the winds of prosperity, God, I pray that the winds of healing, hallelujah, is our portion on today. I pray that the, the winds of wisdom, hallelujah, God, is our portion on today. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. 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 amen.